Wow, what a day. Big day, fed day. What happened? Nothing much. Same old story, same old song and dance. Scripted questions and another small rate hike. What does it mean? Again, not much. We're, we're in the home stretch as far as rate hikes. What does that mean for the longer term? Well, it means that that's good for the market. It means that if you're in fixed income things like treasuries, that kind of stuff, the rates are going to start coming down. Uh, and it means that if you have bonds in your portfolio, you might start to see some positive action towards the end of the year. We'll see what happens. Now, if you watched uh, the Fed meeting today, the, the end of the day, the last like 10 minutes, the market fell. What does that really mean? Not much. It's kind of interesting, actually, because uh, while Powell was talking, it was kind of teetering on both ends. It was going up a little bit, down a little bit, started to gain some traction, and then the bottom just kind of fell out. I don't think that really means anything overall. I think it honestly was profit taking by some entity or another. But, uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see it pop back up tomorrow pretty nicely. Now, the bigger thing is, obviously, gold and silver has seen nice bump, nice bump. And so, you know, it's, it's hard to say, like, will, will, it, will it have staying power? That's always kind of the, the, the issue with gold and silver. They just, you know, they pop up and, you know, a few weeks and it gets everybody all excited and then it just taps out. Will it last? Probably not. Probably not. That'd be my guess. But again, I'm a naysayer, especially when it comes to spot price on, on gold and silver. Would I be happy if it went up? Absolutely. But, you know, if you're a real stacker, at some point you get uh, tempered enthusiasm. That's pretty much where I am. Actually, I'm probably more on the pessimistic side at this point. Now, that being said, something interesting that I was thinking about, especially with regard to, wow, the, every time I look at the enhanced proof, reverse proof, it just looks amazing. I mean, look at that detail. I mean, compare that to your run-of-the-mill Proof Eagle, which again, is it's a nice looking coin. The Proof Eagle, I mean, when you look at it against the, the regular Eagle, I mean, it's pretty phenomenal. I gotta say, like, the, the difference is just night and day. And even this, you know, the Proof Eagle is, is night and day versus a regular Eagle. I gotta say, this is probably one of the nicest uh, Eagles that they, that, I mean, US minted coins that they make. Uh, now, if this was an S over here, that would be the extremely desirable version of this coin, but uh, not as lucky as that. But anyway, what I was looking at is just like, wow, with this premium environment, with this rate environment, I mean, it even makes your generics feel pretty good, like feel pretty, <laughs> everything feels premium when the spot price is high. But it's interesting because in this environment, it's got me looking at even the generic stuff and asking myself, huh? You know, obviously every stacker has, not every stacker, but most stackers have the, the plan that, you know, if spot price skyrocketed, the first thing out the door would be these guys, the generics. And with the generics, I mean, this is a well-known generic in the, in the stacking community, the, the Buffalo rounds. Why? My personal opinion is because these guys were at spot on JM Bullion with your first order. So a lot of, a lot of stackers have these bad boys. I think it was 10 ounces uh, at spot when you make your first purchase. So these are very common in the community um, as far as like stocking. But it's funny because the things that before I would look at as just common bullion now have a pr nice premium on them like the Britannias, like these pandas. You know, these are things that before I would co just consider, I mean, even these guys, which what are these, uh, Sunshine Mint, uh, Silver Rounds? These guys, I mean, even these guys at this point have a, a nice premium associated with them. So it, it makes me look at my stock and say, you know, wait a second, what's really worth keeping here? You know, the things that I thought, you know, would be right out the door. Even these guys, the random bears with the one and a half ounce uh, weight, I'm like, wait, I would want to hold on to those. And this is the problem. You come up with the best laid plans about how your silver stock would be liquidated. Again, there's plenty of you that are consistent about, I'm not liquidating anything ever. Okay, I mean, th that's... There's nothing you could say to that, right? It's, it's it is what it is. That's like it's a good thing. I mean, at least you're con you have your convictions. Yeah, I can't hate on that. But for the other people who kind of look at it as an investment, and you know, there's a right time to buy, there's a right time to sell, right? You got to have an exit strategy. These premium jumps or you know spot price jumps really kind of make it difficult. And so every once in a while, you really have to get in there and evaluate what really would I part with, you know, if the price was right. 
it's not as easy as you think. And I think the answer just becomes more, you know, clouded as you jump into your, your stack. Especially if, like I said, you're considering these kind of things as your generic Boolean. But then when you look at what the, the premiums are, I mean, you know, maybe I hang on to the, the older maples, you know, because they have higher premium. It's a crazy environment, but the little things like that make all the difference. 